Hey guys, we're uh, up in North Antrim's finest Bally Castle area today and we're joined with uh, Jamie and Connor from Evoquip. And you may remember last year we joined them at a demonstration um, and they were looking at uh, Evoquip's range of uh, crushers and screeners and we went along with a tractor and a low loader to show the ease of access and this particular machine here, the Bison 120, was being loaded to it. So fast forward a year and things never stand still. So I'm going to ask you, Jamie, what has happened in a year and why are we up in Bally Castle? Well, I think it's, it's been a trying year for everyone, as, as you well know, with what's going on. So internally we've had to adapt to the situation. Obviously, in our role at the, the company and a lot of the other guys as well, travel would be a big thing, getting out to see the dealers and and spend a bit of time with the customers. So we've had to adapt, put things more online, um, but we've still tried to keep up the, the design and development side of things as well, which is why we're here today with the, the, the Bison 120 that we've done a bit of a revamp on. So try to incorporate some more of the, the customer feedback. So uh, there's a few points which we, we can touch on as, as to what we've improved. And where are we? <laughs> we're in uh, Watertop Farm, up in there, near the North Coast, Cushendall. So, Beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Well, Connor, what have you changed to the machine that we would have seen last year? Yeah, well, from last year, I suppose we've listened to our customer feedback and spoken to the design team and just just uh, added some upgraded features to this model. Uh, it's still the Bison 120, just with a, we've sort of put an improved interface on it for, say, customer, easy use for the customers. Uh, we've now, directly from the screen here, you can uh, adjust the speed of your actual feeder. You can adjust your CSS from the actual jaw, and then you can hydraulic raise and lower your magnet and fold over your product conveyor, all directly from the screen here. So okay. just, uh, just a couple of neat wee user-friendly features have added in that uh, we hope will so add the Bison 120 as very impressive features. And is that something you've worked on? Personally, or? Yeah, I suppose uh, in my role, you're sort of listening directly from our distributors and then you're getting feedback from the end users. And I suppose events like this here, you're taking people, servicemen, and the guys who are actually operating the machines, you're hearing their feedback and then uh, you're just taking that back directly to the factory. That must be something, but that you enjoy because obviously you're within a company that if you've taken feedback within a year and you've now, it's now been improved and it's changed. It yeah. must be satisfying. Yeah, well, we like to think so as we've equipped that like, we are a small team, but we've also got, like, say, the corporate backup with being part of the Terex family. And because we're a small team, we like to think of more a more hands-on approach with their dealers and particularly with the end users. Well, Jamie, give us a quick overview again, because um, it has been a year. What exactly are we looking at here? Well, so this is the, it's the Bison 120, so it's a 12-ton jaw crusher. Um, we have a few jaw crushers in the range. We've got four, four at the minute. So the smallest is a three and a half ton, right up to a 28 ton. So this machine in particular, it's more uh, based for recycling customers. So uh, concrete demolition, maybe some asphalt. Um, so really for this type of machine, it's more about the transport being able to move it around between different sites. So not necessarily, you know, a, a very high production, but it's more about the versatility that we can do a range of different applications. Um, and with that, we have a range of different customers. Um, you know, we have examples of guys making forestry roads. We go to another um, customer that might be some form of, of demolition contracting. So it, it's a wide variety of, of things that can be done. Uh, and that's really where we see the benefit in, in this small 12 ton jaw crusher. And um, it's stinky. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's compact, it's not massive. Yeah, well, I suppose uh, if the Evil Cup slogan, I suppose it is compact with impact. Uh, although many people think it is a small jaw crusher, it certainly packs a punch. And uh, you see even for like this here, getting in around sites and around cities, uh, easy transport is a, a big, big area that we focus on. And you see even the compact footprint when you fold up the conveyor for transport. It's uh, ideal for throwing on the low loader or even getting access into tight spaces. Yeah. What power is it? The engine this here model is actually a uh, Dutz. So uh, look, we've again listened to feedback and uh, suppose now with engine regulations changing this year, 
it's something we've had to take into account for the, this new model. And how have sales been since we joined you last year? Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Like I said, I mean, it's a trying year with COVID, but we've been able to adapt and overcome. We're actually sitting very, very good going into next year. Um, you know, this, this model in particular, I think the success of the event last year was great. Um, we had a couple of new dealers over, some um, guys that were just in the process of being onboarded, others that were relatively young, maybe only one year of working with EvoQuip. So definitely off the back of that event, we saw great uptake. I think everyone enjoyed the show. And I think, you know, the likes of today, for example, when people can see it hands on, is definitely very beneficial when it, it stays to, you know, gets to the stage of people having to, to invest in machines or even with dealers taking machines into stock for, yeah. for demonstration. So. And what are the main physical changes to this machine? I know Connor touched on the interface and being able to just make it that little bit more user friendly. What other physical changes have you made to this new model you've released? Well, I think, you know, just uh, to, to have a look at the machine, you know, the, the doors at the back is one of the things that people will notice straight off as being different from the older model. So, you know, there's complete access now into the, the engine bay and the radiator, for example. So that will be straight away what, what they would notice. Um, also then with regards to for the drive motor it's fully accessible from the front of the machine so physically it does look quite different um, and it's all based around serviceability and access. This particular farm here you're, you're up in the north coast and but it's very easy to get this machine in here. Is this the kind of job that you see this machine for? Yeah I suppose uh, this machine is suitable for uh, concrete and demolition recycling and I suppose this here is a prime example of it. Uh, the shed that they've actually tumbled, they're actually now processing the material here on site. Uh, whereas opposed previously they would have taken that there to landfill. Now it's a reusable product where they're going to use it for laneways, for putting posts. So they're completely reusing the product and they're saving costs by transport to landfill, landfill costs itself and they're doing all the material processing here on site. I think um, they're going to use a good bit of it to keep the old paddy wagon <laughs> I float round the lanes <laughs> just give us a wee run down you know because people love to hear facts and figures i mean this the the css we're moving between 20 millimeter to 80 millimeter and um, so it's a 680 by 400 wide jaw um, so it's you know it, it, it offers a, a good size product for for what people are trying to do you know it can create a lot finer like we say down down to 20 mil for you know, a form of base or something that the guys would be doing. And so you see the likes of today at Watertop Farm, what would the CSS be set at? What would we be crushing at today roughly? So today we have it set at 40 millimetres. Yeah, um, so you can see there the, the size of product that, that, that we're getting out. Um, but we can obviously vary that depending on where the material is going to be used. So just for this particular job, that was that was a requirement. What kind of a throughput would you expect? I know doctors differ, patients die, but what would you expect in an average sort of per hour rate? Or obviously, a lot of that there depends on material, uh, what's actually feeding the machine. But uh, comfortably, this year machine do seven to eight ton an hour, and that's type of application. Mm -hmm.